Recently, I've reviewed a number of flashlights that have been advertised as being tactical by design. They were not, at least in my opinion. However, this flashlight is a full-on tactical flashlight. This is the Brynight PT-16A. And if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this light, keep watching. Before we get started, I just want to thank Brynight for sending out the PT-16A so that I could share it with you. So what makes this a tactical flashlight where the others weren't? Well, this one has instant access to turbo, instant access to strobe, and instant access to the lowest lumen settings like moonlight. Those are the things I consider essential in a tactical flashlight, but this has much more. So the best thing I can do is take you down to the tabletop, go over the key features, the physical and performance specifications, its operation, and all the things I really do like about this light. All right, let's get started. Just before we focus in on the light itself, let me show you what it came with. This is the box the light came in. Inside of the box, there is a good number of things. Start with this one very heavy duty belt holster. I'll go over this in a bit more detail in a moment because it has a few features I really like and some maybe not so much. It also did come with a lanyard. I don't think I'd be using it too much, but it's nice for people who like to have those. It came with a USB type C charging cable as per standard, of course. It came with a pair of spare O-rings. It came with this operating manual with warranty information, of course, and two more features, one in my hand. This is a flashlight tactical ring. I'll show you how that works in a moment. The other one is actually also a tactical holding thing. There's probably a better name for that on the flashlight itself, which I'll show you how that helps. And a, of course, a removable pocket clip plus a 5,000 milliamp 21700 lithium ion battery installed. All right, let's go over the key features for the PT-16A. And here's where I'll be showing you the features that really do make this a true tactical flashlight. First and foremost, two tail cap switches. The button here is for momentary and locked on turbo. And the button here is for momentary strobe. Those are two things that you want in a tactical flashlight for sure. But this flashlight comes with yet another switch, which is on the side, which will allow you to bring the lowest light settings on immediately without having to go through different lumen settings, but it also does allow you to ramp up the different lumen settings to whatever it is you feel you need. Another thing that makes this a true tactical flashlight is the fact that it has a deep focused reflector, nicely polished. This will cast out a long distance, as you'll see when we get it outside, and hopefully this will pick up. Carborendum glass breakers built into the crenellated basil up here. So also good for striking impact, breaking glass when needed. I did mention this thing right here, this removable ring, and it's, I know it's got a name for it. If I can figure out what the proper name for it is, it'll go on the screen. But that is also for allow you to hold onto the flashlight while you access the buttons on the tail cap switch. And I did mention the pocket clip as well. All these features together, make this a tactical flashlight. Though there is one more feature, which of course I can't demonstrate because I don't have for you, is that is this can be weapons mounted and a different tail cap switch can be put on that will be pressure sensitive for a pressure switch for operation while mounted to a firearm. Going over the physical specifications for the PT-16A, it has an overall length of 6.26 inches or 159 millimeters a diameter at its widest of 1.53 inches or 39 millimeters, a weight with the battery installed of 7.8 ounces, 220 grams. It has a dustproof, waterproof rating of IP68 and an impact resistance rating of one meter. As far as the performance specifications for this light go, this has a whopping 3000 lumen turbo, but that'll only last for one minute before it drops down to 600 lumens, which will last for an additional two hours and 15 minutes. It has a high setting of 900 lumens lasting three hours and 50 minutes, a medium setting of 120 lumens lasting 20 hours, and a low setting of five lumens lasting 300 hours. The strobe will blast out at 1800 lumens, and the SOS will go out at 300 lumens. All right, just before we go into the operation of this light, I wanted to give you a few close-ups, and I'm also gonna talk about the belt holster as well. So just rolling the light over, you can see where the pocket clip is. 
I'll tell you now, to remove the pocket clip, you first have to remove the end cap, you have to remove the ring, and then you can slide the pocket clip off. It doesn't just snap on and off like a lot of other flashlights. You can see the side button here. You can see the, hopefully you can see at least the carbide tips on the bezel for striking and the charge port here inside there. Close up of the tail cap. You can see where the lanyard would attach. Again, not something I'd probably put on this light, but if you want to, that's where it would attach. The strobe button and the turbo button. All right, now let's just bring the holster back in for a minute because I, when I first pulled this out of the box, I was deeply impressed. It was one of the most heavy-duty heavy holsters that I have been sent or have even seen in a long, long time until I started putting the light inside of it. Now, I may be misunderstanding how this works, but uh, we'll go through, and if you have some ideas, then please do share them with me. First off, one of the things I like about it is this belt attachment. It has a rotating uh, buckle on the back that allows you to put it into a number of different positions. I suppose you could attach it to not only your duty belt, but also to web gear, whatever else you have to attach it to. Just a side look of that. You can see it's going to stay on once you get it on. My only issue is it's narrow. For a duty belt, this is narrow because duty belts tend to be at least two inches and uh, quite thick at that. This would not have fit on my duty belt for sure. It'll fit on a regular belt, and quite a good size regular belt, but not a duty belt. So I'm not quite sure what that's all about. I think that may be a bit of a miss because this would make an ideal a flashlight for carrying on anyone's duty belt. The holster itself is heavy duty Kajura nylon and padded. It's quite well padded and stiffened as well. Two little pockets on the side. I'm not quite sure what I'd put in those. It looks like they're intended for a pen or something, and maybe just a little extra accessory. I'm sure you can find something that you can run through those if you really felt the need for. But here's the part that I'm not sure what it's all about. Wide open hole on this end, and one on the other end. Now, I'm just going to run the flashlight down inside the holster, and you'll see where my dilemma comes. So. There is a relief cut here, again, again, to reach in and touch to it, you know, to turn it on. I'm not sure. But there, if the holster, the flashlight is in the holster like this, that's perfect. It fits in there just nicely. But then the buttons are exposed on the bottom. And the glass is exposed on top. I don't know if that's a good feature. Or not. Actually, I don't think it is a good feature. So I just played with it a little bit, and I discovered you can actually push the light out through. Again. Why? I'm not sure. Would you want to operate it from inside of the holster? You probably could. In fact, you could probably turn this on while it's on your belt and have the light shine out through the hole on the end of it and just by angling it forward. It's not something I'd recommend because this does get hot. Not so hot that you're going to blister yourself, but I wouldn't want to try, but I expect it would probably get hot enough that it would cause damage to the holster. Alternatively, if I wanted to put it basal down, it'll also do that, and that's just fine, but again, the buttons are exposed, and I don't think, and as well as the glass on the, on the basal itself. Again, I'm not sure why that is. If you can tell me, please put it in the comments section. I will be reaching out to the company to see what their intent was with this, and if they don't have a good answer, I'm going to say change it, because it's otherwise a great holster. I know I took a few minutes to explain that, but I just think that this is so close, yet not quite there. All right, let me get the light back out of the holster. Now, I mentioned that this ring, again, I still don't know what the name for it is, is usable for holding on to the end of the flashlight so that you can access the two buttons here. Well, so is this tactical ring. And what I'm going to do is just take the other one off, put the tactical ring on so you can see what that looks like. Give me a minute because... While it's easy to start this off, you actually have to wiggle it, and it takes a few seconds. So I'll just avoid all of that by taking this off and putting the other one on. All right, I've installed the tactical ring, and I'll show you a couple of different ways this can be used. And this is going to be really up to the user. What is your preference? First of all, I just wanted to show you the ring that I did remove. That's the other way of holding onto the light and the pocket clip. And the pocket clip can be removed from the light, but you can also leave it on if that's what you want to do. It actually rests underneath either of these rings clipped in there, and that's why there's a 
little relief cut there. So entirely up to you. By the way, this is the reason that relief cut is in the, the holster is so that you can run the light basal down and have access to the ring. Can you see that there? I'm hoping that shows up. So, so you can get at it for a quick removal from your holster by pulling it out like this. Now, this is not a full-on demonstration, certainly not an instruction video on how to use one of these tactical flashlight rings, but one of the easiest ways is to do just what I did. Now, by pulling the flashlight out and using my index finger on my left hand, or my non-shooting hand, non-dominant hand, whatever you want to refer to it as, then I've got good secure grip. I have very little chance of actually dropping the light, either taking it out of the holster or while I have it in my hand for operation. That's one way of doing it. And from here, I have access to either of the two buttons, the, the uh, turbo or the strobe. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, and this is often done when used with a uh, weapon in one hand. It kind of looks like I'm holding a weapon in this hand, but I'm, of course, this is a flashlight, and now I can use my thumb for accessing those same buttons. There is a third way for using one like this. I'm just not finding it very comfortable for doing it, and it has to do with having the finger and thumb on the ring itself while the buttons rest against your center finger. I mean, it's doable. As you can see, I'm able to do it. It's just, it doesn't feel very secure in my hand. So this is really up to the user themselves and how that is used. Any way you look at it, this is a nice option. This is kind of a new trend in tactical flashlights to have a, a ring like this. Personally, my favorite way of using something like this would be like that in my hand. I have good full-time grip on that, and I'm not going to lose it, even if I open my hands to grapple or do anything else with it. All right, now let's just go through the operation of the light itself. Operating the turbo from the button on the tail cap is either a partial press, and you can just press and release, or you can lock it on if you want. Either one works just fine. And you also have a partial press for strobe as well. I'm pointing it towards me so I don't blind anybody in the, in the camera because this is very, very, very bright. And so those are the, those two end cap buttons. And where you, or how you index it in your hand is kind of like what do you think you're going to be using most often. For me, I like having that turbo right under my thumb. And, you know, this is a little bit the size of your hand, a little bit how arthritic your hands are like this old man. And, uh, you know, I can still access this button really well. It's a little harder for me to reach over and reach the strobe, but if I want to use the strobe primarily, then I roll it around and now have instant access to the strobe. And I can still access the turbo, but it's kind of like a 50-50 when I try. So that's why I like to be able to index it either way in my hand, depending on what it is I think I'm likely going to use. Now, when it comes to using the side tail cap button, it is a long press, or I should say a short press for the last lumen setting on and then off again. And as you can see, you're starting to move through. If I want to turn it off though, I have to long press. So that's great. A short press turns it on, but a long press turns it off. And what that means, of course, is that you're going to not intentionally turn it off on yourself, I guess is probably the better way to say it. But once you have it on with a short press, you can just tap your way through the different settings as you can see, and down to lowest. Again, that's, it would be low at five lumens. Now, if I want a long press, I gotta remember long press to turn it off. If I wanna go directly to the lowest lumen setting, and this is the thing again that makes this a tactical light in my mind, instant access to turbo, instant access to strobe, and instant access to the lowest setting. Long press the button, and now I'm down to five lumens. Sometimes you don't want the brightest light or the flashing light. You want the lowest lumen setting for just to be you know, less observed inside of your vehicle, maybe inside of an area you just don't want to be noticed, a lot of bright light. That's what makes this great. And again, long press to turn it off. One last feature before we get the light outside and do some testing with it out there is the electronic lockout. So it has one and it works in two ways. If I lay this light down or put it in my holster and don't use it for a minute, the side button locks out. So you can't unintentionally turn the side button on. I think that's a pretty good feature. I could take it or leave it. It doesn't hurt the operation of the light, but it's nice to know that when you're pressing the button, why isn't this turning on? I'll explain how to turn it on in a minute. You still have instant access through the two end caps. You always want instant access through those. The other way of locking the light out, again, just the side button, is to triple press it. And that will lock this out intentionally 
And if you want to get access to the side button again, it's another triple press. Good features for sure, but again, you still always have instant access to turbo and strobe. All right, let's get it outside and do some demonstration. All right, let's start the Brunite PT16A off on medium. As you can see, very centralized hotspot, casting out a long ways. Quite a bit of flood on either side, though, just the same, but very distinct hotspot. And we'll take it up to high. No, we won't. All right, let's start the Brunite PT16A off on medium. This light really can throw. There's a central hotspot. There is some flood around the outside, but it's all about that central hotspot. Even on medium, my backyard, my neighbor's backyard and beyond, we'll take it up to high. And that's really starting to blast it out. You know, I would be happy to have a flashlight with just this level on it, but let's take her up to turbo. Look at that. That goes out a long, long ways. Just daylight here in the backyard. All right, a few closing comments for the Brynight PT16A tactical flashlight. You know, when Brynight reached out and offered to send this light to me, um, well, I've been disappointed in the past when somebody said they had a tactical flashlight that they wanted me to test for them. Not this time. This one not only met my expectations, it truly exceeded them. If you're in the market for a tactical flashlight, this needs to be on your short list. There's just so much to like about it. I won't go through all the features that we talked about before, but last thing I'll say about the light itself is that beam cast, a long distance white light with just enough flood around the outsides that you're not going to miss any movement there. Another good feature for sure on a tactical flashlight. Now, miss, I'm not sure, maybe just I'm misunderstanding it, and that is the belt holster. A couple of things, the belt clip itself. I like the rotating feature of it. I don't know that I am really enamored with the plastic. It, to me, I just wonder if it's going to stand up to the long-term test of, you know, wearing it on a duty belt. Trust me, you can have a lot of wear and tear if you're getting in and out of a vehicle a lot. It's hard to say I don't do that anymore, so I can't tell you if it's got long-term durability, but that's not the only thing. The belt passageway is not large enough for a proper full-size duty belt. Again, I'm not sure what the intent was there and why they'd made it that way. I think that could be easily improved. The other thing about the holster is the fact that it has that holes top and bottom. Both of them allow access to either the on-off buttons, the tail cap switches that is, or to the basil doesn't offer the protection that it should for each of those. The rest of the holster is just overbuilt almost. And in fact, I really like the rest of it. If I could just understand why they made it that way, maybe there's a legitimate reason that I just don't know about. If you know, please put that in the comments section below. Now, that's the other thing. If you, I'll be putting all the specifications for this light and the links to where you can take another look at it in the video description. But if you have any comments or questions regarding this light, put those in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.